uh, Studio contain this Correct Me challenge, uh, what we call target. So if you execute this, it basically intentionally leak uh, some of the data to bypass the, uh, the ex uh, mitigation that we're gonna, uh, we, we talk about so far. For example, say if you type check sec, it has DP is enabled. Now, unfortunately, uh, the PIE is not enabled in this binary. So there's a chance that we can abuse something uh, in the binary as well. Now, and in, in, our, in my system, in my local environment, and also same as our server, uh, we provide the full system randomization. Meaning that if you execute this uh, over and over again, whenever you execute this program, the stack and the address of the library, the libc library, keep changing. Okay, uh, stack, stack pointer is changed across the execution and address of the system also change. As you can see, it's a D8, uh, D4 instance. But again, as, as we discussed before, the offset between the systems and prenef is kind of fixed. Uh, even under SLR in the system, because the entire library will be mapping in your process space, the virtual address space. So the, the difference is obtained, uh, meaning that if you leak one of those data, then there's a chance that we can abuse those type of information. So they completely bypass SLR, uh, apply to libc functions, for instance, right? Today's job is that, uh, Given this leakage information, how we can uh, exploit the program without leveraging the shellcode uh, that we've been uh, using in, in previous lab. So in order to do this, let me quickly walk over uh, what's in this binary. So I, I launch uh, some of the analysis in, uh, of this binary in Jydra. So this is the routine they simply printed print it out. So as, as part of the stack data, it printed out the address of arg, arg C. Okay, that's pretty acceptable, right? It's a one of the stack variable. And in terms of system, we intentionally load uh, those information. And then we, uh, through this DL system call, uh, DL library call. So whenever we invoke this, the, the dynamic linker, particularly the library itself, and walk over uh, such a simple table and find out the corresponding uh, address of the system. So in this case, we know the address of the system and address of PNF. Uh, and then once they dig out those information and the program actually start, and this is the actual implementation that we're gonna attack. Uh, the vulnerability here is pretty simple. They're gonna read the buffer from the user uh, input way beyond the amount of data located in the local frame. So in other words, we can smash the attack, uh, smash the stack so that we can hijack the execution because this program in particular doesn't contain the stack gunnery uh, as part of this program, right? Uh, first thing first, uh, let's see whether this information is nicely matched with what we know in debugger. And when you run the program, uh, it printed out say system here, right? This is a system address that the program printed out. We want to see the actual system. And this is a actual system implementation. A system a library of the libc is say this particular one. It's the same, right? Yeah. So this is a, what we got out of the execution. You see uh, both of the, both address are exactly same. Uh, and this is actual implementation of system when you invoke system uh, in, in your uh, local program, uh, in your target program. So uh, because we, we know this information, uh, so let's write uh, the actual exploitation. So again, this particular bug is so easy. You can simply trigger with just a large input, large enough input, thousand maybe. And as you can see, the program crash. Uh, if you analyze the dump, say we can hijack the instruct po instruction pointer in L 
a a a which means is a 44 offset starting from the other list. So let's quickly write some of the attack. Uh, So we're going to receive until the password. Interactive. So when you execute this, Are we gonna receive until the password? So basically, uh, this is what we got as output, right? Until the password, and we're gonna parse this information, and because we like to utilize that, so basically, and we just need three. And say leak. So we have this data ready in, in our hands. Uh, let's make it integer so we can compute. So we, we have every information here so that we can access to uh, those through input information, right? Through uh, printf as a keyword and system as a keyword as well. So what we're gonna do, uh, let's create the payload that make sure that we really control uh, the instruction pointer. So the 44, this. It's 44. And say that if so we simply send this entire data uh, because they, they're going to read the data, either send or send line should be fine. And uh, hopefully this one crash uh, in that bit. See, the instruction pointer now can be controlled. What should we do? Let's. What, what if we start invoking print f? Say that even if we provide the invalid data, I like to say that the program print out the valid password, right? Uh, if that's our goal, let's figure it out. The password okay. So address, uh, uh, this is the address of password, okay. This string. Let's copy this. So I just copy the address of password, okay. And see if we can do return to libc attacks on in this particular. Okay, this is the what we want. And what about printf? Uh, we already know, right, through the leakage information. Enough. And then what should be the data here? Uh, it should be dummy data because this will be again considered as a return uh, address for instruction pointer of caller to invoke printf, right? In normal circumstances. But we just give an impression that printf is well invoked uh, from the BBB. So we hope the program crashes as a result. Or we can say that if in order to keep track of those.
And then we, we're going to provide the first argument in this case here. Okay. This is address of password OK. So hope that we, if we provide this, print f will be invoke. And then print f will, will get the data from the data pointer of the password OK. And then when they're returning back, they're going to cross check the depth if. You can see, say invalid password, but we kind of redirect the execution flow to printf. And we can even control the argument of the printf. So say password, okay. Uh, that seems easy. Uh, what, what if we do a uh, system? Say system. Because we already know the address of the system. And, and any interesting data that we can utilize here? Uh, what about this guy? So you can actually pick any any string here. Uh, either system, it sounds cool, or we, we can just take this number. Uh, what we are expecting is the system will be invoked with the actual data. And they're gonna attempt to invoke this particular program, right? Like this guy. Okay. Uh, the shell is executed, and unfortunately, they couldn't find this one uh, in my path. Is there any we can hijack this? In fact, hijacking this is a pretty easy in shell in cap. Go black to this particular one. And when, when this, this one is executed, uh, when, when this particular program is executed, it simply contain this bin cat pro flag. Uh, the flag is dumped as a result. Uh, our intention here is that we can hijack the program by simply providing the path variable like this. I'm sure this one's actually getting there, see? Uh, we manipulate the path here so that uh, even if they trying to execute 250382, uh, they, they, they're, gonna, they're gonna pick one of the command, uh, one of the program in current directory. So in other words, by, by having this, we could easily hijack the program and get the flag as a result. Now, unfortunately, though, uh, this is the, not what we wanted. Uh, so in, in your case, this target seccom uh, doesn't allow this system or particular fork system calls as a result. So it only allow open uh, read and write system calls as part of the execution. So in our, in our case, let's try to expand this idea further so that we can actually launch the attack against the target seccom, right? Uh, given this setting, uh, what if we, uh, so if we execute this, the system will be invoked, the proc flags invoked as a result, uh, will be done as a result, and program still crash at this location, right? So let's see, uh, execute this. Uh, if you dump the core dump, see that if still the instruction pointer will be taken here. What if we want to do uh, printf once more? So you're gonna do the same uh, because this is the new instruction position, right? So in this case, we're gonna say printf. And this is the argument of the printf. Uh, let's say we're gonna just reuse this one. So because of this printf, uh, this particular one will be invoked as a result. What's gonna happen next? So you can see uh, this new string is printed uh, because right after system is invoked, printf will be invoked as a result uh, because now, because they consider this is located at the return address position. 
And starting from here, this is the argument position of the printf, so that they consider 250382 as 2 as your first argument here. Right. But where does it crash? So because the return address here will be considered this particular one, so that as you can see here, return address uh, now pointing to this particular location. So in order to avoid this, we're going to introduce a return-oriented programming. So what are those uh, instruction set uh, or what are those pop gadget, I would say, uh, that we can utilize? In fact, there, there are tons of pop gadget uh, in the program. For instance, say that Uh, let's go here. Right. And this is a, just a program uh, in, in my, say, Texas section here. Right. Uh, pop jump. See, this is a big pop gadget that you can utilize. And this is say pop, pop, pop return. And these are the, the instructions that we can abuse. Say that uh, we, we can say this is a pop, three pop gadget. So let's copy this guy. So you can pick any uh, gadget that you like to use. And we also gonna talk about how to utilize the program that actually summarize the list of the gadget for you. So without seeing all these by yourself. Okay, this is a pop, 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 return, three pop. Yeah, three is enough. So this is say this is a pop, 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 return gadget. Okay. So in order to uh, further change this program, so what we're gonna do is that instead of the, instead of invoking printf, so we're gonna say, one, one another trick is that the pop instruction is just one, I'll say, one byte. Uh, we can keep creating this another pop gadget out of these others, uh, like this. So in this case, we just need a pop return. So this, uh, this data will be popped, and then this will be taken as a result. And then similarly, uh, the new frame will be start uh, right after invoking the system. And we can provide the PR, meaning that this, this particular argument will be clean. And, and this instruction pointer will be taken after. Okay. Like this. And again, this is what we call first the frame for the system. This is a frame for the, uh, for the printf. This is a new frame. Any, any function you, you want to change can be placed there. Okay, see? So we provide this, uh, the system is invoke and printf is invoke with the argument that we control. And where does it stop? We should be that beef, right? The instruction pointer is now also controlled by us in a way that, what if we want to invoke another one? Another printf. In other words, once you have, you can see, two string that we pick uh, is printed as a result. So you can indefinitely uh, uh, chain those execution in this technique, right? But today, uh, we're gonna actually utilize this to demonstrate the return-oriented programming that invoke I'll say crop flag open read out of the file descriptor of the previous open and some the buffer data like this. These are three sequence of uh, libc uh, function invocation through this chain instead of these three, right? So let's first construct this open. Uh, what's the address of open? How can we know? Because we know the leakage of certain pointer, we have to uh, diversely calculate the address of 
uh, the open system code. The very first trick that we're gonna do is starting from the address of the system. We, we know the address of system like this. So watch the offset. And this is a, a 32 bit library in my system. So if type system, in fact, there are a few of them, but this particular one is what we are looking for, right? This is uh, the API exposed by the library here. So uh, because we know the offset inside the image by simply uh, subsetting or uh, subtracting this offset, you can get the libc base in this way. And then because you, you know the libc base, you can indirectly compute uh, the address of open And this is the one what we're looking for, right? This is open system code. And let's put the other one as well quickly. So we now have a list of address. So it's a really good idea to keep track of them uh, so that we can easily validate uh, if something go wrong. It's starting from libc, uh, open. everything that we need. So let's just start executing this. So as you can see, uh, one, of, one of the, I'll say, uh, common way to recognize that what you get is correct is that uh, libc base is based uh, mapping to a page region. So in other words, uh, you, you always you should see this 0, 0, 0 at the end, right? So by, by doing so, you kind of have confidence that your, your base address that you calculated uh, is correctly specified here. So, so again, we know everything that we need. Let's try to invoke this open system call. So instead of a system, let's discard this. Now we're gonna provide the open address. And what should be this one? Because we're gonna provide two argument. So we're gonna do pop up return. So that we're gonna clean up two argument that we're gonna utilize. Uh, for the time being, let's, let's keep this guy. Uh, keep, keep the, let, let's abuse this one uh, so that we can kind of replace this one for the poke flag later. And then uh, the another, the read argument, read prompt here, read argument here is just a zero. So once you pop this two value, the next one will be start. So that that is, uh, is, in, is, is inserted as a return. So this one, uh, once they invoke this open uh, system call or open libc function, and they're gonna exit, uh, they're gonna crash with the that diff. So it seems everything is well, well uh, working as, as planned. So in order to de debug whether this file descriptor is actually open or not, uh, you better uh, put some of the GDB instance so that we can actually see, uh, examine the status instead of the core dump here. So let's just continue. Uh, we execute the program crashes your result. Uh, if you type prog info, uh, you can see the file descriptor they actually attempt to open here, right? Uh, indeed, they open the file. Uh, that's a good sign that open is executed as expected. 
So because we are working on the local environment, say instead, instead of having this, what about we embody link uh, to this guy? So when, whenever this particular one is invoked, uh, read, uh, then we can see the actual flag as a result. So open is well invoked uh, by using this technique. What about read? So read is also easy because this is our instruction that they're gonna take. And this is the location, the say return address, dummy. And the first argument should be three uh, in as we saw in previous one. Right, the file is group by three. And then we need some of the location of the buffer. We, we're gonna talk about this later. And then some of the art in enough, enough space uh, that contain the poke flag. So what should be the good, uh, I'll say, a buffer relation that you can utilize. So in fact, if you, if you see the entire virtual address space here, there are many places you can abuse. Probably some of the writable region, of course, this purple line, basically most of the data section that you cannot build. But we know that instead of computing this libc data section, so we, we just simply pick this one, right? Uh, say we're gonna, the middle of those section that no one is actually using. So say that buffer uh, this location. So hope that once we uh, invoke the open, the read is executed so that we can see such data inside the GDB. Right? The program is executed. The program crash as expected, the D value here. And we like to see the data to so make sure that flag is invoked, uh, is mapped in my file descriptor, you see. So these data is well well dumped. We're located in the buffer. The previously is just zero value, right? We contain the actual flag. And the next time, uh, we're gonna clean up this location, uh, the stack frame, uh, because we use a three argument here, right? So we're gonna do p p p r. So it's basically pop, three pops in return. So pop pop pop, and this fun, uh, this location will be taken. See that bit, right? So what's the next one? So make sure that this guy is actually working as expected, right? That bit is taken. So next time we're gonna simply write. Uh, in next time, uh, in this case, we also really doesn't matter because it's the last code that we're gonna invoke. And uh, this is the output file descriptor, standard output. And we're gonna print out the data inside the buffer and this amount of data. So let's see. The program crash in the DDD in this location. Okay, and if you want, we can do uh, PPPR. Or if you really want, you can just invoke the exit here, right? Uh, so that you can nicely terminate the entire execution. And, but we, we don't care as far as we read the flag uh, like this. So, uh, simply recap, right? Oh, so another one is that we start abusing the local environment in this way, right? We, we actually abusing this, this particular fi local file, symbolic link to the profile. How can you inject some of the data? So unlikely the program, entire program space is a profile, right? See? If you run the program, you can search. Uh, probably there are a bunch of proc, right? Also a bunch of flag. Uh, but unfortunately, there's no proc flag uh, in, in my address space. So in other words, these are the string data that you have to inject to the memory. So in other words, uh, how can you inject to the memory? By simply invoking with system call. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna stop right after the first three. So our plan is that we're gonna read the data uh, input and from my console your standard input, but we're gonna put the data inside the buffer, which is simply we use this, we use this location. But now we're gonna only get the probe flag uh, amount of data 
uh, into this buffer and exit. And once we uh, send the payroll, we're gonna send the profile. So in, in, before we do this, we have to pause a little bit uh, so that uh, the program is not just appending the data to the previous payload. So what, what is the uh, thing that we can put? Yeah, invalid password. Let's say we're gonna wait until invalid password. Just to say invalid. And once we are, we make sure the program accepted this amount payload, we're gonna send this extra information and inject it to the memory buffer that we specified in this first gadget. Right. And instead of proceeding the rest of the code, we actually stop to make sure that everything uh, is working as expected. So program is executed. Uh, we just stop at the dead beef, in this case here. Uh, and then we're gonna check the buffer here. So again, previously just empty location, but if you dump this uh, particular place, you can see this is a scope flag. So in other words, by specifying this address as a first argument of the open, now probe flag will be just used, um, will be used as a first argument of the buffer here. And after this one, that actually open is uh, invoke this probe flag, the buffer is reusing the rest of the, the rest of the code. See, see, yeah, right. So. Uh, probe flag is invoke. See, in in the probe info, the probe flag is invoke. Uh, it is mapped as a file descriptor in the program. The open read and write will be invoked so that they can actually dump the entire data out of this probe flag. As a result, we don't have. Oh, we still have the room. Let's delete this stuff. The program crashed because of this, this hiccup that we provided, but it's okay. As far as we injected the prop flag to the memory and we invoke open, we chain open read and write system code in sequence uh, in a way that we really control the entire execution of the program. So we get this actual flag uh, as output uh, of the, in this tutorial. So this is, uh, this is end of the first tutorial uh, but next tutorial is much difficult. We're gonna we're gonna talk about 64-bit architecture, and not only that, we are not gonna provide the leakage information. It's our job to leak the program by ourselves. So this leak uh, won't be given in the next phase. Uh, so that our first job is to figure out the location of the leak C, and then we're gonna launch the graph against the 64-bit architecture. So. Uh, I think this is a good time to take a break. And after a five minute break, uh, we're going to restart at 30. Uh, so if you guys have any questions about this tutorial and next one, feel free to leave any comments here.